In this problem, we're going to find the arc length of the graph of this function from 0 to 2. So first, let me refresh your memory with the arc length formula. So the notation we use is lowercase s, and it's given by the definite integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus, then we have y prime quantity squared dx. So this is the formula that is typically used for arc length. Okay, so we have to start by taking the derivative, so let's do that. So y prime is equal to, so the 1 half is a constant, so we can just leave it hanging out. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then the same thing here, the derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 1. So we're using the chain rule for this derivative. So you take the derivative of the outside, which is e to the negative x, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Negative x is your inside function, and its derivative is negative 1. Let's go ahead and rewrite this as 1 half e to the x minus e to the negative x. The arc length formula now says we have to square everything, so let's go ahead and do that as well. So that'll give us parentheses 1 half, parentheses e to the x minus e to the negative x, parentheses, parentheses, and all of this is being squared. So now we just square each piece. So we square the 1 half, that gives us 1 fourth, and we have this other piece here, which we'll square now. In order to square this piece, we're going to want to use a formula from math. If you have a minus b quantity squared, the formula says that you square the a, you multiply the a and the b, and you double them, and you keep the sign, and then you put a plus sign and you square the b. So we'll do the same thing here. We have 1 fourth. So we'll start by squaring e to the x. So when you square e to the x, what happens is you put a 2 here. And what that means is you multiply the 2 and the x. So you just get e to the 2x. So this is e to the 2x. Minus 2ab. And you know what? I'll go ahead and write it 2ab. So you see it. I usually don't do it, but now you can see it plus, and then square e to the negative x, that'll give us e to the negative 2x. Again, you're multiplying here. You have e to the negative x squared. So you multiply the 2 and the negative x. That gives you e to the negative 2x. And this is your a, and this is your b. Look at this. These just cancel. It's really nice. So we have 1 fourth e to the 2x. Let's go ahead and distribute. 1 fourth times negative 2 is negative 1 half and then plus 1 fourth e to the negative 2x. And by the way, the reason these cancel, there's two reasons. Method one, you can just add the exponents. x plus negative x is 0, so you get 1. Method two, you can bring the second term downstairs, the second factor downstairs, and you get 1. So in any case, you end up with 1. Almost there. Now we just need to add 1 to all of this. So 1 plus y prime squared that's from the formula, is equal to 1 plus everything we just wrote down. So 1 fourth e to the 2x minus 1 half plus 1 fourth e to the negative 2x. And we can combine the 1 and the minus 1 half. So this is 1 fourth e to the 2x. 1 minus 1 half is positive 1 half, and then we still have the 1 fourth here, and an e to the negative 2x. The trick now is, or the idea is, we need to take the square root of this and then actually integrate. So what we'll do is we'll pull out a 1 fourth. There's a trick. That'll give us e to the 2x and then pulling out a 1 fourth from the 1 half is going to give us 2. And you can check that because 1 fourth times 2 is 1 half, and then plus e 
to the negative 2x. And now this, here's the, here's the, the kicker, the, the super trick. This is actually e to the x plus e to the negative x squared. And I'm going based on pure memorization because this should work. So now let's check to see if it works. If you multiply the first one, you get e to the x squared, so you get e to the 2x plus 2ab, so 2e to the x, e to the negative x, plus the last one squared, so e to the negative 2x. Boom, sure enough, you get this. So if you multiply this out using the formula, uh, you, you get this right here. All right, so now we can find s. So s is the definite integral, and we've been working on this so long that I've already forgotten what the a and the b are. Uh, 0 to 2. So a is 0, b is 2. That comes from, from this, right? This is your, your a and this is your b. So 0 to 2. So 0 to 2. And we have the square root of this stuff here. So 1 fourth e to the x plus e to the negative x squared dx. All right, so this is equal to the definite integral from 0 to 2. When you take the square root of 1 fourth, you just get 1 half. And then here you just get e to the x plus e to the negative x, where the 2 goes away, dx. It's a pretty easy integral. So this is 1 half e to the x. That's because the integral of e to the x is e to the x. And the next one will be 1 half. And then to integrate e to the negative x, what you do is you just write down e to the negative x, and then you divide by negative 1. And then we're going from 0 to 2. That's always the case. If you had like e to the 3x, whenever you have a number times x, you just divide by the number. In this particular case, the number is the number negative 1. So it's actually e to the negative x over negative 1 plus c. This only works when there's a number here, and obviously that number can't be zero. And uh, yeah, so it always works. You could work it out by making a u substitution, uh, but it's not necessary. Let me go ahead and rewrite this one more time. 1 half e to the x minus 1 half e to the negative x, and then 0 to 2. Almost there. So now we plug in the 2. So we have 1 half e squared minus 1 half e to the negative 2 and then minus and there's two terms so it's really important to use parentheses okay so parentheses 1 half e to the 0 I'll write it just so you see it minus 1 half e to the negative 0 which is just e to the 0 I'm going to show one more step so this is 1 half e squared minus 1 half e to the negative 2. e to the 0 is 1. Um, so, oh, actually, this is just going to be 0 here, right? This is, isn't this 1 half minus 1 half? Yeah, this is gone because e to the 0 is 1. So that's it. That should be it because um, it's minus 0. So all of this goes away because these are, these are 1s. Let me type this into my calculator just to see the decimal answer. So 1 half times e squared minus one half times uh, e to the negative two and I got three point six seven so approximately three point six two six eight six so if you wanted two decimals it would be three point six three uh, if you wanted three decimals it would be three point six two Seven. So that would be the arc length. I hope this video has been helpful.